There's a song by Bill and Gloria Gaither, and the chorus goes like this, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds a future, and life is worth a living just because he lives. Over the last year and a half, I've certainly been able to relate to that in a way that I could face tomorrow. I guess most of us face difficulties and uncertainties at some point in our life, but certainly over the last year and a half, I think this has been highlighted for us, really, the uncertainty of what's going on as we've looked at all these kind of graphs here that we see on the BBC and other places, the graphs of daily infections and the, the, the uncertainty and anxiety. And I suppose the way that it started this, a real fear because we didn't really know what was going to happen. And uh, it was quite uh, uncertain, uh, uncertain times that we lived, lived in and probably to a certain extent still do. But the little song that Bill and Gloria gave wrote, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow, Because He Lives, All Fear Is Gone, has a reality to it. And that's because the person that they write about is no ordinary person. And what he has done is no ordinary feat. So who is this person then? And um, what has he done? Well, they say in the, the first verse of the, the song, God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my saviour lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. Let's think about this then. When God sent his son, they called him Jesus. Then we'll think about the fact that he came to love, heal and forgive and what that actually means uh, for us, because it is a huge thing. We think at Christmas time of the birth of the Lord Jesus, we think about um, the message of the angels to the shepherds. Remember, they said to him, for there is born to you this day in the city of David, a saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And we think at Christmas time of the baby being born at Bethlehem and laid in the manger. And so we know from the scriptures that God sent his son and his name was Jesus. They came to love, heal and forgive. It's a different kind of love from human love because 1 John 4 verse 10 tells us this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. And when we think about God's love, I think we get some clues here in these verses about why the Lord Jesus came. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 tells us about God. God, get, God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So a couple of clues here as to why the Lord Jesus came. The song tells us he came to love, heal and forgive. And we've thought about God's love for us, a love that is beyond human understanding, really, or way beyond the kind of love that we experience and give out as human beings. But what did he come to do? He came to heal and he came to forgive. He came to heal a broken relationship and he came to forgive. A broken relationship with God that really is broken because of our wrongdoing. And the Bible is quite a, a hard-hitting book. It doesn't mess about it. It gets really to the point of, the, of things. And it can be difficult reading for us sometimes because it tells us things that maybe perhaps we're not too keen to find out. But it does tell us that we have all done wrong. And I guess really we can look at ourselves. We can look at others and we can always find someone worse than us or someone better than us. But really, if we look into our own heart and into our own lives, we know that we've all done things that we shouldn't have. And sometimes we've not done things that we, that we should do. So the Bible is quite clear about this, uh, why God sent his son into the world. John chapter 3, verse 17. This is an important verse. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Many people look at God and see God as a God who is harsh, a God who is, uh, is, is angry with us. But actually we find that we have a God of compassion and a God of love, but a God of absolute holiness as well. And God sent his son not to condemn us, but in order that we might all be saved through him. And the reason for this is because, as we alluded to earlier, the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We've all done things that we shouldn't have done. We've all done wrong. And that, that wrongdoing has consequences. In the short term, it brings guilt and perhaps a lack of, a lack of self-worth and unease and a lack of peace generally. I suppose maybe just a general feeling that something is missing in our life. And that's down to that missing relationship, that broken relationship with God. And the wrongdoing does bring these, these feelings of guilt and this lack of peace because of that broken relationship. There's a greater or lesser degree, I suppose, perhaps maybe we've all felt these feelings at some point in some way. 
a wrong doing the consequences because here's a, a chilling glimpse into the future. We can, you can read more about it in the book of Revelation, chapter 20. But John just writes this, this little bit here and he says, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. So you can see that um, this broken relationship with God has consequences for us just now, but serious consequences for the future. And this is why the Lord Jesus So chapter 3, verse 16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven. He died on the cross. He took the punishment for my sin, for your sin. And what God wants us to do now is just to uh, acknowledge and face up to the fact that we have done wrong, to confess our sins to God and ask for his, for his cleansing and his forgiveness, trusting in the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is a thing. We can have that restored the relationship with God and we can be sure that we are no longer have to sin. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ came. He came to love, to heal, and to forgive. Thank you for listening to this short message again today.